Well, this is wonderful. <laughs> I think we have the perfect audience for this. We've never done this before at OIFF. Um, the director, let me see where I can see it. The director and Tim were on other projects. Um, it's an amazing film. So I was thinking, hey, we live in Oceanside, the home of the turkey trot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this person on my left is a legend, and I would like I would like you to introduce yourself, Kathy. I'd like you to tell us why you are here. Give us a this little bit. Is that working? So yes, I'm Kathy Kinane. I'm the organizer of the Ocean, the 18th annual Oceanside Turkey Trot. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for coming tonight. Really appreciate it. That well, wasn't that a great wait, movie? No, Kathy. Wait, 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 Kathy. We're not going to skim over you for a second here. What's this thing about the Olympics? What was that? 1984? Oh, so she had me do a little bio. So I, the furthest I ever ran in one day was 30 miles. 26.2 <laughs> of it was the uh, Olympic trials up in uh, Olympia, Washington. It was quite an honor and uh, I'm thankful to have experienced that. And yeah. you're doing events all over Southern California. I know, seriously. Seriously. You have a wonderful company, and you do things all over Southern California, right? You we sort of did, but now we're focusing on the Turkey Trot and our Move Your Feet Before You Eat Foundation. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We, we really want to get people to put in their miles of smiles every day. You know, you listen to that, right? It's all about mental health. Yes, it is. And the gentleman on your left? Oh, this is... The endurance legend of the world now, uh, recent recipient of the World Triathlon Hall of Fame, Bob Babbitt. Thank you. What a treat to get to watch that film. That was beautiful. And uh, what are some of your accomplishments, young man? <laughs> I really haven't. Uh, well, <laughs> um, in the Ironman Hall of Fame, the USA Triathlon Hall of Fame, the Global Triathlon Awards for right. a lifetime achievement, and basically means you're old. So, and they, they give you eulogies before you de you're dead, is what right. it comes down to. <laughs> now, I've been involved with uh, the sport of triathlon in 1980, went over to do the third ever Ironman World Championship, and there's only 100 of us, so right. I've watched this sport grow and created a magazine called Competitor Magazine to chronicle race directors like Kathy and, and great events like uh, great endurance athletes like we just saw, and then started a foundation 30 years ago with two buddies of mine, and uh, it's called the Challenged Athletes Foundation. That's right. Oh, I like that. Yeah. We have now raised $147 million, wow. sent out over 40,000 grants to athletes in 50 states and yeah. uh, 73 countries, and more importantly, in 104 different sports. Who knew there were 104 different sports? But we have people who are looking for grants in, in lots of different sports, from sled hockey to wheelchair basketball, you name it. Isn't there something about an ESPY in there or something like that? We I mean, did win an ESPY award for uh, yeah, our, yeah. our film. It was uh -huh. the Arthur Ashe Courage Award for a film called The Manual's Gift about a young man from Ghana who uh, ended up, he was shining shoes in, in, in Ghana, and had a deformed leg, and a few years later, had a film made on his life, narrated by Oprah, and we ended up in the Oval Office with President Bush after Emmanuel won the SB Award for awesome. uh, SB Award for Courage. Beautiful, beautiful. And how about uh, you, Joey? What's going on the, over there? The mystery person here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've I've done my share of races, and I can really uh, understand what Tim went through. And the one thing I want to actually, or a couple of things I just want to say is that. He helped actually help me answer a question that everybody always asks is, why do you do this? And at the very end, he's, it's bigger than me. And yeah. what I think a lot of people need to understand is that these films are not made because they're looking for fame or notoriety. It's not about that. It's bigger than themselves. And that's the, that's the push inside of each person, right? right? It's, it's different for all of you. So for him to allow this opportunity and to be on film to show some of those trails. There's well over, you know, 1,200 hours of actual running condensed into one hour. 
So yeah. the highs and the lows mm -hmm. that Tim and every endurance athlete goes through is more than what you get to see on the film. And that's because yeah. it goes back to, it's for them. But this is all of our, you know, th this is our way of maybe helping bring people into the community to understand right. that you can be better and it's about nature. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a runner. I was a softball player. <laughs> I'm just sure. Uh, but the bottom line is, is, you know, best documentary. It's, it's up for best documentary, best cinematography, you know, best directing. And it just captured the human spirit. And I think that's why us uh, programmers just loved it. I think that he humanized a goal. And it was very obvious, like, What's interesting, do you, are there any ultra, ultra runners here? Wow. There you go. Wow. I mean, we're, there must have been so many places in this film that people could relate to because it just seemed to me, do you, you it is an inner, it's not even a competition. You know, no. that's what I think running is a sport, but yet it's not a competition. Is that correct? Yeah, it's you against you and it's you against the course. That's why the camaraderie of our sports, running, triathlon, cycling, mountain biking, there, there's something that's so unique about that because when you go to that starting line, yeah, you want to do your best and you want to, you know, you want to win your division, whatever, but you're really testing yourself. And when you get to the finish line of a marathon or of a short triathlon, you change yourself. You become a better version of yourself every time you finish something that you thought you couldn't do. Like for me, when I first did Ironman 1980, I thought it was a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride and 26.2 mile run. I had no idea you did the whole thing in one day. You know, we had a police auction bike, had pannier sleeping bag and tent on the back of the bike. And I thought you swam 2.4, rode 56, camped out and rode back the next day. Right. So that became an adventure when I found out you're supposed to do the whole thing in one day. Yeah. And that's exactly how the sport began as an adventure. First marathoners, first triathletes, it was an adventure. And for Tim, it, it's an adventure yes. that leads to something bigger. And, and the thing that hit me the most was you expect he's doing this unbelievable, this unbelievable accomplishment. And you, you think, okay, there's going to be bands at the finish. There's going to be all sorts of cheering. And it's almost anticlimactic, but it doesn't matter because right. he knows what he just did. His family knows what he just did. And it's so special. And I think part of the fact that, that, that he is on the trail by himself in the middle of the night with just his coach makes it even that much more special because it doesn't matter That's who right. else is out there. It's just you and, your, you and yourself, your thoughts and your dreams. And it seems like, you know, there's a, a real community with, I mean, obviously by tonight, that there's a runner's community. And when he was on the trail and people were there encouraging him and helping him, that wasn't shocking, right? Is it, have no. you all been on runs and that happens or? Well, and I think he was inspiring to each of those people on that trail. I mean, they were on their own journey, but when they saw him, it took their, their, they probably thought about themselves upping their goals and saying, wow, maybe I can go a little further today or another time, which is very exciting. And sharing that with your other runners is a very special part of our sport. It, it definitely exemplifies the bond that a lot of runners have or cyclists or whatever you do. Um, it, it's so difficult and it's really hard to explain, even though you watch it on film, I'm telling you that's nothing what the actual you know, athlete went through, and it's about that family. Honestly, the crews, and I know there's a bunch of crews here who have helped runners. To me, that, that's a thankless job, and in, in many times, it's more difficult than what the athlete's going through. So we can't do that without that family. Because there's so many different areas and types of running. There is a laundry list. Um, there's recreational runners. There's, I mean, are... are yeah, professional runners, absolutely. I mean, yeah. and uh, there is a difference in a personality type, I would imagine. Just like in the film industry, <laughs> a director is a certain way, or you can go, hey, that guy's a grip, or, you know, I mean, people, not to stereotype, but, you know, so are you born a long-distance there, runner? There's or? definitely a continuum in the sport from people who are just out there to just go from light, one light pole to the other, to people who are going to run, you know, from Mexico to Canada. And every human has different needs. 
and different dreams. And that's the great thing about running is that it accommodates everyone to come to the sport. And one of my favorite aspects of the sport, of course, is turkey trot, where you go there, you see families of all ages, intergenerational families, sharing this accomplishment together. And there's not that many sports where you know, you're side by side with your granddaughter and everybody gets to share those memories forever. It's pretty wonderful. I always say that uh, our sports are an equal opportunity abuser. They, they don't really care if you're big or small or if you're in a wheelchair or if you're missing a leg. It's all about getting from point A to point B and you've achieved your goal. And that, that's what makes our sport so special. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Because running through the pain, uh, is that a thing? So I, yes. so I have to tell you that, you know, I, um, he's right about the endorphins and the serotonin yes, levels yeah, and I, dopamine. That's very real. You know, we are originally hunter-gatherers. That's what humans are. And we really do require to go out and hunt and gather every day to say, stay mentally healthy. And the pain is probably more attributed at the beginning, right, and at the end. But in the middle, it is very uplifting. You get in a deep meditative state, just like you watched him. Yes. And he overcame the pain in his leg, and I'm pretty sure that chiropractor had a lot to do with it. Oh my God. Holy cow. Yeah. But you saw, he got through it, and then you saw how beautifully he was running at the end. And the mental health aspects cannot be exaggerated. We need to move yeah. every day. Yes. And I think the other side of that is you see the the demons that he was dealing with earlier in his life. Yeah. And yeah. obviously one addiction led to another, that's yes. positive addiction, which led to his wife and his family and everything else. So you see, a, you do see some people, especially achieving, who yeah. come from a sort of addictive background and move on and find something that's healthy for them. And it's, and it's interesting because I've interviewed a lot of, there's one athlete in the sport of triathlon, Lionel Sanders, who at one point was, you know, he was doing cocaine. He was, he thought the government was chasing him. He was suicidal. And then out of the blue, he told his parents he wanted to do this Ironman event in Louisville. And now he's one of the best in the world. He's married with a child and one of the, one of the most followed athletes in our world. But he, he just traded in one addiction for another that turned out to be a positive addiction. It, it seems to me, I'm going to open it up to, I, I want to have... If someone from OIFF can come and help with, oh, do you have the audience mic? Oh, good. I, I want to hear you guys' thoughts about a few things. But when you're running, it, it would seem to me that internal dialogue, right? It, it's a fascinating thing to me. I mean, are you vulnerable? I, I know everyone's different, but the vulnerability, are those tapes that you're running vulnerable? Or are you mechanical? Like, are you just... I think everybody's you feel, different. I know, I, it's yeah. fascinating. I wanted to hear some people's process because he there, seems there, very... There, there's both. You know, you, you have the mechanical, you have everything else in the thoughtful thing. Um, but what you'll see, I think, in some of these pe these films and when you talk to other uh, runners, is the mantra is, oh, it's terrible right now, but don't worry, it's going to get better. <laughs> and you know what happens when it gets better? It's going to get worse. And that keeps us going because we know that's a cycle. I mean, this, this life, this endurance ability is just a cycle and you gotta get through it. And you know that, and that's where the strength comes from. It's inside, right? right? You, right. Your body is terrible, it's in bad shape. You've seen that, We've, a lot of us have felt that. And you just know, it's all right. As long as I get one mile forward, one foot forward, it's gonna feel better. Because the terrain, the weather, the snakes, uh, and, boy, and know. I think you learn skills during this sport right. that you carry over to everyday life. You know, you're sitting at your desk and you've got all this stuff you have to do. Well, you call on your running when you're going, oh my God, I'm running 20. You can be thinking, I'm running 26 miles. Or in his case, imagine he's 27 days in and he's thinking, oh, I'm halfway done. Yes. That can that can defeat you right there when you're running a marathon and you're like, oh, I've run three miles. Oh, I got 23 to go. Or hey, I've run a 5K. How many more 5Ks can I do? I've done a lot of 5 You, You guys know, you break everything down into small little pieces and you get through that, that big, you know, you, get, you eat the elephant one piece at a time. 
So we have, I mean, we have every area um, of the journey in this room, probably uh, 50 miles a day for 50 days. Ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Right. I just, Mind wanted, I just wanted to clarify that. Right. That's, all right. Does anyone have any questions? Here we go. Kendall, right over here. I had two questions. Um, it just seems like a, a, a logistic uh, genius to be able to hook up with him every 10 miles to supply him. Um, and how did you figure all that out? And with, you know, going off. And then the second thing is, what about going, how did you choose that path? Because it, it seems like you could stay on level ground if you went along the coast. In, in general, for ultra running or multi-day events, it, it is a logistical nightmare <laughs> for, for crews and the runners. And that's a big part of why we show up to these events almost mentally exhausted because you know what you're about to put people through and you just hope at one point, I've, I've done it all. And it, it's all that planning just comes together. But when it comes together, just like when you're running, and it gets better or it gets worse, the logistics get better and then they get worse. So you just persevere, your crew knows that. And th that's where that bonding of family comes in. That's why it's called an endurance sport. You just dig your heels in and you figure out what works. I mean, you saw duct tape and whatever else. Uh, hey, I don't like this food anymore. I don't want this, you know, whatever, this drink. And you just gotta ad lib. Oh, there's so many trails out there. I mean, it's beautiful. You know, I've, I've run sections of PCT uh, from down south and, of course, all the way up in Washington, Oregon, and a lot of stuff in the middle. Um, you take the route that's in your heart. As far as the PCT, it's kind of already designated for you. You just follow your trail signs. Hopefully because you keep your wits. what you did, you did 100 miles in, in the western... It, how many days did it take you? I love, I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done my share of the 100 milers, and that's, that's generally one day. I mean, you're looking, a range of the runners is yeah. 14 what? hours to 14 hours. hours. Yeah. 100 miles, 14 wow. hours. Oh, yeah. Seriously. And wow. there's no sleeping. That's, 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 the, that's my favorite question. People go, how many times did you take a nap? Yeah. Well, you, you do the math. Yes. <laughs> And I mean, what is the day like before that? Do you sleep the night before or what is normally, what do no. you put in your body for that to Cu begin? A couple of beers <laughs> right before bedtime. <laughs> oh, roll tacos. <laughs> it's too late to change your mind. Yeah, yeah. that's myself. <laughs> yeah, a lot goes through your head. There's not a lot of sleeping. So that's where the planning comes in with your crews yeah. and stuff is, you know, you're going to do this thing and you plan weeks out and you say, all right, you know, that week or two leading up to it, that's where it has to be my best nutrition, my best sleep, my best rest, because those, that day or the two days before the event, um, you're just trying to calm your body, bring everything down a level, keep yeah. your heart rate level, don't get too excited about it because it's okay. When yeah. you start that event, whether there's people there or not, that adrenaline just hits you like a shot and you say, I'm going. And that's where all of your fear and trepidation and concern just goes to the wayside because you know you did your homework. Because ice is almost a necessity to runners, it seems. Uh, and there wasn't ice. It, I didn't see much of ice, you know, icing. Oh, I think he had plenty. Yeah, I think they were, okay. his crew I was picking up stuff. Yeah. The yeah. other thing that when you talk about Western states or those type of events, yeah. you saw the different climates that he ran through over yeah. 50 days. This guy's going through that in one day. You're starting out and, you know, how cold is it when you're starting? And then how hot is it during the day? And you're running some years in snow. Right. And then you're, you know, then you're trying to keep your head cool. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, and it's do tough. Do you say that you, did you win? No. <laughs> oh. I'd leave that to Tim. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I've, I've met him at some of the Western states and uh, he's a great guy that exudes what all. Oh, you the ran Western with him? Have. I, I ran in the same race. Awesome. Not with. Awesome. <laughs> Let's awesome. See. Well, that's Anybody who finishes those things is a winner. Yes. Anybody who finishes that's that That's what I'm saying. I, I that's why they have yeah. a belt buckle yes. for coming across that line. Again, yes. it's, 
it's the other side that, that we probably don't talk enough about. The f people who are filming this, right? Yes. Yeah, no, I who was, are I'm up going there. Yeah. as soon as he's done. Yes. It's not like they're stopping. Yes. They've got to get all their footage together. They've got to plan the next mm -hmm. day. They, what route are we going to get to? There's fallen trees. There's okay, snow. So it, we're now we're in my it, area. Uh, do I get to talk about that? You, it's you, okay, unbelievable. Okay, so you're a producer. Are you a producer? We actually have a, our, uh, one of our films is out right now. Oh. It's actually one of our Kids Smart Challenge Athletes Foundation, believe it or not, is a quadruple amputee baseball player, missing both hands, both legs. Right. And oh, a buddy wow. of mine, a producer for National Geographic named Eric Cochran, he called me eight years ago and he goes, listen, there's this little eight-year-old kid who's mis missing both hands and both legs. And I met him at a veteran softball game today. And he's not just hitting the ball cro cross-handed like this. He's talking smack to the veterans. The <laughs> veterans are pitching and, and he's like, dude, you're missing a leg, not an arm. Put the ball over the plate. And he goes, this kid's got such great attitude. So he covered him for eight years. And through our Challenge Athletes Foundation, we worked with him on the film. And Landis made his high school varsity baseball team while our awesome. cameras were rolling. Awesome. The film is on, it's on Apple TV. It's on Google Play. It's on Amazon Prime. It's called Landis Just Watch Me. Oh, right. And it's, it's phenomenal. Oh, well, congratulations. So, thank you. It's been I really mean, because the cameraman, I, I know Tim carried the camera on his stick a lot, but... Uh, are there running, I mean, we have yep. them like in, you know, skateboard films or what have you. You have cameramen on skateboards. Do you think that a lot of this crew are runners? Yeah, oh, big time. Because yeah. they had they had drone footage. Yeah. They're out there filming. They're, you, you can imagine they're setting up, trying to get the drone footage. Mm -hmm. And how many times did they miss him? Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, there, there's a lot of sections where obviously you can't get cameras. But one of the things that you don't want your runner to worry about is... The, the crew and That's the right. camera people, right? So right. there is some responsibility there. They need to be runners themselves because you you got to take care of yourself, right? right? I, I mean, physically, nutritionally. So yeah, I, I, a lot of the folks I've seen are definitely runners on their own, and when they're not running, they're back I love that he shoot away the cameraman. So <laughs> so one of my one of my favorite stories about that is years ago. How many people know what the race across America is? So the first ever race across America, there was four athletes that were going to be riding from L.A. to, uh, to New wait, where did they finish? Annapolis, right? And it was John Howard and Michael Shermer and Pete Pensiers and Lon Haldeman. And Jim Lampley was a commentator for ABC. And they had no idea what these guys were going to be doing. So uh, he walked up to Lon Haldeman's girlfriend and said, so... Okay, you guys will ride, what, a few hundred miles a day, then you stop and sleep. And she's like, no, we're leaving from Santa Monica, and we're not stopping until we get to Annapolis. And so he had to go back and tell his crew, if they're not sleeping, you're not sleeping. And so basically, they went nonstop for, what was it, 10, 11 days, something like that. Yeah, I mean, we shot the Baja 1000, and... Those motorcycles almost kill you. Absolutely. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Do we have any other questions? Oh, right there, sir. No, nah, you're Go good. Go for it. Where's the banjo? Come on. I'm not sure how that got in there. but uh, Banjo fans, no, I like it. Uh, yeah. But, you know, runners have lives too, outside of actually Absolutely. running. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. You got hurt. Stuff, stuff Mile happens. 19. Yeah. And you, but you get through it because you know what you want to do. It's, you know the race is bigger than you. Yeah. I'm not dead yet. So, yeah, it's just a broken phone. What would you do? Did you break uh, a I... When I came off the snow coming down into Duncan Canyon, uh, I fell down a, a hill, a oh. bit of rock, and fractured my tibia. Um, and that's, I think, where some of the, I don't know, I don't know where the perseverance comes in. You don't, you can't think about the pain. You don't have time to stop and deal with it. You know, you, you got to get to safety first, and then 
for me, you know, it's not like there was anything at the moment to help me except right. other runners, right. right? That that family came and got me off the, the mountain uh, to put me back on the trail. And I said, don't leave me here. I'll figure it out. Uh, because I also know on that trail, you don't have ice coming up to you on the trail. But I know there's lots of cold creeks. It was a snowy year. So I'm like, well, that's fine. I'll just numb the pain in the creek. So every creek along the way, I dipped in, just as you saw Tim do in, in, you know, in the film. And it gets you through. I don't know. It's, it, it's a power you can't explain. Power of sport. Yeah, there you go. And um, also, what's the big deal? It's only 80 miles, right? It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. I mean, all you know. You, sir. You're a crazy person. Oh, what do you eat? You mean during the trail run itself? I bet you he went through different phases of things he liked and things he would never wanted to eat again. Definitely. There, there's, there's things you got to have your calories, you got to have your carbs, you got to have, you know, your important nutrition items. But also there's a time where you don't want to eat anything and you focus on get anything in your belly and you go like, hey, I want candy or I want a tortilla. You eat anything, whatever comes out runner's mind that they can keep down. So you can start with that, but it, 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 yeah. it, it, it goes best made the plans. handbasket quickly. I yeah. remember Dean Carnassus, when he did the uh, 50 marathons, 50 days, 50 states, he would be running and he would call and order a pizza to be delivered at the third and Elm while he was running. And don't cut it, and he would just roll it up like a burrito and just eat the thing. Uh, that's you, know, you when you're burning that much, it doesn't really matter what you put in, but you you put in a lot. Calories. That's Do you it. have something to say? Are you? You're a, you're an endurance runner, right? Yeah. You gotta you gotta work both sides of the game, right? You, you gotta do. be on the trail, but you also gotta work it. So. Yep. I'll have a cold can of beer for you, though. <laughs> anyway, we have to wrap it up. Anyone have one last question? Well, I hope you enjoyed the film. We love the yeah. film. Thank you. Yeah. That was great. Well done. Wonderful. Thank you for our local legends here. Uh, Thank North County much. Pride right here, right here. Let's give them a warm uh, welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy.